Hi everyone, welcome today. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, we have some special stuff for you today. And um, yeah, we have some special guests in the house today, so that's really cool. Um, and anyone that's here for the first time, I so appreciate you joining. I know there's tons of choices out there on YouTube for um, choosing what to watch, so I super appreciate it. Um, so if you're like if you like what we're doing here, make sure that you subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications. So I always like to just kind of start out by chatting about what's going on in the studio. Um, we're sprucing up a little bit for the holidays, so that's really fun. We have some really special stuff uh, planned for at least our 12 days of Christmas, which is going to be, I think, December 23rd through um, December 30th. I think that's what we're going to do. So stay tuned for that. Um, so think contests, gifts, and silly stuff, that, that kind of thing. Um, uh, I wanted to start out the stream today by uh, a little shout out to my mom. Thanks, mom. Love you. Uh, yesterday, I did an interview and demo with Eric Rhodes on Facebook Live, so that was super fun. And that interview just really reminded me uh, how much energy I've really, really poured into the online lessons this year. This has kind of been a difficult year. So all the energy that I used to put into traveling all around and doing live workshops, I've just really poured into the online lessons. and. Um, been really great because I feel like I get to connect with all my students uh, not just for the three or four days that when I did a live workshop it'd be three or four days and then see ya but the online lessons are an opportunity to connect with my students all year long so that's super special and I'm really really grateful and last day or so I've been connecting with my some of my students on one of my Facebook groups and we're kind of putting together a list of frequently asked questions so that when we do the public live streams, there'll be, a, a, we're hoping in a couple weeks we'll have a link that you can just click on that and you can get all the answers to all the frequently asked questions. And we certainly got some, some nice in-depth questions that hopefully I can just answer for you. But we also got some fun, silly stuff like, uh, what music do you listen to, which I don't tell people. And um, is Kevin my husband? No, Kevin is not my husband. I don't have one of those. Um, so yeah, so it's been really, really fun. Um, so we're going to put that together for you. Um, also, I wanted to mention to my Color College folks, it's Color College, you guys. It's not Color Grade School. <laughs> so it is a little hard. So just be patient with yourself. Try not to get frustrated. And I am going to work this weekend on a color wheel in pastel because I think that that's important. And so that's coming. I also wanted to talk about a book that I'm reading, which is really super, super interesting. And I'm reading this. This is kind of a coffee table book. And it's not a textbook, but it's kind of technical, The Biology of Seeing. It's really amazing. I can only digest about hmm, 20 minutes at a time of it. But I've been really playing with it and list, look, you know, reading this book. And this morning, I was reading this little bit about edges and that we really see edges. We don't see line. That in the visual field, in reality, there is no line, really. It's just edges. And so this is just kind of really interesting study. And it does affect and apply to what we're doing as painters. So more on that to come. So that's really, really cool. Um, but I really think that um, uh, with us being cooped up and everything being so unpredictable and unprecedented, is it is that opportunity to do that in-depth study of painting and, and, and what we're doing here. And this is an opportunity um, to really dig in our heels and um, get those goals to improve our painting and use the time without the, these distractions that we usually have. So I'm really determined to make this time count. And I'm really here to help you do the same if you want to. So um, 
um, that's what I'm doing. So in addition to my new course, Color College, which is for anybody that's involved with color, I wanted to bring back the Black Friday sale, which is still going on for another week um, to show my gratitude to all my students. So um, I, it wouldn't be possible for me to do all of this without you guys. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be doing all this. So Black Friday is only for one more week. And here is how our sale works. So everything is at its lowest price ever. So check out the Black Friday link in the description of the video. We're giving everyone a coupon code for $23 off any order, but um, recognize that this is only good for um, one purchase per customer. So it can't be, and it can't be used on the new course, which is Color College, because it's already at its, uh, it's already discounted. But it can be used for our 11 other workshops and our membership subscription. Um, I have workshops in watercolor, oil, acrylic, and of course, pastel. So check them all out. Um, we are super duper proud of all of them. And uh, I love, love, love that we can, that we have 11 workshops now. Uh, we, we worked super hard this year. Um, so let's talk a little bit before I get started painting about how our membership subscription works. So the monthly pastel painting lessons online, as you might know, we have two years of content and 25 sessions that includes over a hundred hours of video and over a thousand pages of study guide. So here is year one of our study guide. And this is it. <laughs> it's a, these are, this is a printed PDF and you can print these out um, and it's tons and tons of information, which I think is a really super valuable resource. So there's that. And um, yeah, let's see. I want to make sure I'm saying everything. Oh, so the monthly uh, painting lessons online is like a gym app membership. So you can access everything like in a gym as long as you remain a member. Um, and this is, I set this up as meant to be a foundational pastel painting practice. And it really includes some great new features this year. Monthly mileage training, little exercises just to keep you going every month in addition to the monthly session. So that's kind of extra. And it includes a monthly super stream lesson, which is a long, in-depth live stream lesson for members only. Um, that These go above and beyond what I do uh, for free here on, on, on YouTube. Um, the yearly subscription, there's a coupon code for $70 off the already reduced price. So it's really a great time to sign up. Um, we won't have another offer again for quite some time like this. So um, please just be aware that the coupon is only good for new subscriptions. We can't um, use them for, re we can't uh, apply them to renewals and it only applies to the first year. So we, we really want to encourage new people to sign up. So, and also please understand that we can't refund for purchases that you might have already made prior to the sale. It's just the way sales work. Um, okay. Additionally, we have a coupon for monthly subscribers. So if you pay monthly, that'll give you two months free, which essentially allows you to try before you buy, which is cool. But um, the advantage of monthly over, um, uh, of yearly over monthly is it does cost less for the yearly and the yearly people have access to everything right away. So you can kind of jump around and pick and choose. Um, but the monthly have access to two sessions for each month. So I hope to see new people on there and new faces joining up on the, the site and um, participating in the Facebook groups. So that, that's really fun. And the sale is going on just for one more week. So check it out on the Black Friday um, page on the site. So fill up those stockings with everything. There's Again, there's watercolor, oil, acrylic, and of course pastel. Alrighty, so, oh, before I get started with the, the lesson today, I just want to check and make sure of time. Um, before I get started, I want to toot my horn a little bit about Color College. Um, 
When I was in art school, I had this amazing instructor named Judy Crook. And I don't think she's around anymore because she was getting up there when uh, I was a little kid, really. I was 18 when I was at Art Center. Um, but her classes really literally changed the world of color for thousands of students, and not just painters. Because when I was at Art Center, there, there were photographers, industrial designers, automotive designers, graphic designers. Everybody had to take Judy Crook's color class. And so it was really amazing. And I wanted to really bring that foundational understanding of color to all my students because I think it's so important and key to really just having fun and freedom in using color in your paintings. So if you have color in, you, in your life, you need Color College. All right, so that's it um, on, on um, the website. Uh, today's lesson, uh, I want to talk about that just a little bit before I get started on that too. Um, last night I got around to writing a blog post, which I haven't had very much time for in a while. And I was really thinking about this idea of good taste and how overrated it is. Um, I've really traditionally avoided these kind of bright, kind of bombastic sunset scenes because I think that they can come across kind of trite or um, not so great in the wrong hands. But who doesn't love a beautiful sunset? And who doesn't want to paint it, right? And why wouldn't you? So um, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to paint this um, scene from Fiji. I went to Fiji a number of years ago to teach a workshop and also to, to do a meditation retreat, actually. Um, but I think that um, to accomplish this type of scene and, and do it well, and I'm I hope I can do it well today. You really need that foundational understanding of the three aspects of color, value, hue, and saturation. And so, before I get started today, uh, I want to, I'm going to have these guys go to my, my palette cam first off, because I want to pre-select some sticks before we even get going. So here's my photo reference that I'm going to use today. And let's just talk about these. Some of these colors are, um, my, am I on the, here? Okay, great. Thank you. Some of these colors are a little tricky. They're, some of them are over here in the really intense things. You know, you're going to want, you're going to want to go to the, these really super saturated things for sure. But then, in contrast, to make these guys pop, also going to need some stuff that's a lot more neutral. Like, look at in here. What's happening in here? It's, it's more like this, right? It's this kind of thing. So we're going to need both to make it happen. Um, so I'm thinking that. I'm also thinking, guys, like here in the water. Gosh, you know, I'm, I'm, I, th I think stuff like this, maybe even. See that? Look at that. So interesting. I think it's really, really amazing. So then we're gonna want we're gonna want some of this this kind of peachy stuff in here. Maybe maybe some of this for the clouds. Also looking at the looking at that water, um I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna want some stuff like this. Look at it's, you know, really muted. Um, also, look at this gradation in the sky. This is what color is this in here? So one of the things that helps me is to take this little grayscale thing and like, what what is that? Well, that's this helps me see the value and also the color because it's isolating that color. But I'm looking at this area like, what is that? When you look at that, it's it's not really blue. It's not really. I'm I'm I'm, I'm thinking it, it might even be over in here. It's, it has a sort of greenishness to it, to me. But then it's also got 
some of this to it. So it might be this, this interesting mix. So we'll see how that goes. Oops. All right. So I've got a few, few things selected. So I think I'm ready to get going. And I am going to put my hair up so it's out of the way. Then we'll get started painting. Cool. Marla, we have one question uh -huh. um, from Ursula. She asks if you do any classes on color selection specifically, or have you considered doing that? I, not, not specifically, but it's a great idea, Ursula. It's so hard to get to everything. There's so much. There's so, so much richness and so much um, to kind of tackle. All right, I'll get my hair really out of the way today. All right, glasses back on. All right, and so I'm going to come up here to my um, little scene, and I'm going to give, I'm going to stick with this landscape proportion today. Um, the main thing I want to think about here before I go any further is I want that horizon to be perpendicular to the picture plane. So I am going to go ahead and get my triangle out. I'm going to decide how much, how much ocean do I want versus sky. I think I'm going to keep it kind of low because it really is all about the sky. Now this line doesn't have to, it can be a soft edge, but I want it straight. The water lies flat, as far as I know. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where I want that sun to set. And, I, you know, I'm just thinking about kind of the rule of thirds here. So I'm thinking right, right about there. I'm just going to give myself a little indication. And then I'm going to go ahead and get in some of these cloud shapes. I want to plan for these cloud shapes. I don't want to, I wouldn't ever do the gradation of the sky and then try to get the clouds over the top. Now, why is that? Because then I would be putting product over product and um, making it would tend to make it muddy. So I don't want to do that. So this is just kind of mapping out where things are going to sit in my scene. I'm thinking about the, the sort of gesture of the clouds. These clouds, and I also think about the, the way the light's hitting the clouds and you know, the, it's, we've got this depth of field, so we want to try to catch some of that, too. And up here, I definitely want some of that blue sky, so I might want a little bit more up here. Now, again, see that? I just adjusted that frame. And if I paint to the edge, I can't do that. So that's the, one of the big reasons I don't paint right to the edge, so that I have a little bit of wiggle room. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of um, just swipe in, mop in a little bit of that blue spruce so that I know that I want that darker in value. And I'll do the same thing here in the water. So I'm just giving myself some little idea. Now, do I want this little island spit? Yeah, but right now it's kind of like in there, but not in there very much. So I'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger. And that's just because I don't want something to look like, oh, is it in there? I don't want neither here nor there. I want to say things with, with um, being definitive 
about what's in and what's out of my scene. And then I'm going to, I like these waves, it's so pretty. So I'm going to get those in. So Marla, we have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, can we see your grayscale card again? And can you talk about that a little bit? That's one that you made? Yeah, I made this. So yeah, this is just, um, this is a, I, I made it in acrylic so I could get my hands on it. If you make it in a pastel, then you're going to mess it up. It's just kind of right, right there in the middle. So I just made us, um, this, it's on pastel, this is pastel mat, and I just um, mixed up with acrylic paint, um, something that's right in the middle, and then just hole punched a couple holes in it so that I can, you know, that's, it's just a handy little tool. All and right. Another uh, quick question. Mm -hmm. um, can you remind us what size paper you're working on today? I don't know. Okay. We have to measure it. And also, how do you choose the color? Of the paper? Um, so today I chose the paper, this wine colored paper, because I see a lot right right in here that seems like it's close in, in color and even in value. Um, sometimes I, so it's, an, it's, it's analogous, right? Sometimes I'll do, make a choice because it's, it's uh, more complimentary, um, but um, yeah, and sometimes I'll use white and I'll do an underpainting. So it really all depends. And then there is that's what I've got left in my drawer. And I'm going to use it because I'm going to paint. Okay, I want to pick some things. I've got this. Is that too? Now look at how close that is to the paper. See, that's what I'm talking about right in here. It's always good to have a, um, some, to choose some um, sticks that are, are close to what's the paper so that if you need to, if you need to add more, you can. Um, so there's that. I'm going to come up here with this blue. So now I'm just kind of getting some, a little something in for these clouds. Also, Marla, um, we have quite a few comments about everyone was really happy about your appearance with Eric Rhodes yesterday. Oh, yay! <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah, it was fun. It was really good. So I'm going to get a little of this down here. And this isn't quite right, but it's close enough. I'd like to see that a little greener, actually. I'm going to come in with something like this. And see, I'm, I'm using a motion like this because I'm coming along that edge. And as I get closer to this, where the sun is, boy, it gets tricky. That's really tricky. What color is that? It's, ah, it's so, I feel like it's, I feel like it's this. I get in here. And do you, um, Eric puts all of those interviews and demos on his own YouTube page, correct? They're on, it was Facebook Live. And so um, I, I'm, I can, I'm going to post the link on my um, Facebook Marla, Marla Baguetta art. Um, but I haven't, I haven't had a chance to do it yet, but I will. He also posts on YouTube. We we watched a stream. Of oh, we, oh yeah. The, oh really? It's on. Okay. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. All right. So I'm just gonna get a few things in here, just to start, just to get me going. And I want. Um, this, that silvery thing, it's so... I'm looking at what that is. This might be, it might be like this. And then I'm gonna come in here. 
I just kind of want to put some things down to like get me off and running. I think that that's pretty good. That isn't, that isn't exactly it either. Uh. The, like this cloud, what color is it? It's, it's kind of gray, but it's kind of purple. It's kind of green. Um, I'm, I think that that's fascinating when you look at it, look at something and what, what in the heck is that? What color is that? It's a little, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. these. What are they? And this one. All right. Also another quick question, Marla. Mm -hmm. um, did you take this reference photo? And how, I, did, how did you print it out? I did take this reference photo. This is in Fiji, and um, uh, I printed it out on a on my handy dandy photo printer, which I I actually just recently got, which you know printers, boy, it's just kind of a problematic because they're so, they use a lot of ink and it's expensive, but that's the way it goes. It's kind of worth it. Um, people, one of the questions on the um, Facebook group that came up um, the, the other day was, why do you hold the photo? And um, so some of you that have been taking lessons from me for a while kn might know that I used to um, have an iPad stand, and I pretty much relied on it. Um, but recently, I got that photo printer. Well, back in the day, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I used to, this is how I started out. I held the photo in my hand when I painted. And it's something I'm really comfortable with, and it just is just my it's just my own personal um, uh, habit. That's it. Also, I can do this. Mm. <laughs> what what's going on there? So my edge there, it isn't exact. It isn't. It, it's a little. It's not exactly straight, but it's level, so it's okay. I'll come back and straighten it up as I go. I don't need it to. I don't need it to be perfect just right now. All right, let's get let's get in here and really get to work. Cause I, I've been dancing around a couple things here. Cause I, because I um, mostly because I know that I'm gonna do some. Uh, that I have in mind to do a couple things. And I'm just going to go ahead and do them. I want to get the gradation of the sky. So I'm going to start there. What, what do I want up there? And I'm going to start knitting the sky around the clouds up here. And just to clarify, um, typically you start with your blue spruce, which is a harder pastel, and then you use a variety of hard and soft pastels throughout. Yeah, I do. I use a, a wide variety. I'm always going to err on the side of value, no matter what the hardness of the pastel. I want, I want to get the value right. Um, and what I'll do is I'll adjust my touch um, or the pressure that I'm using to apply the pastel based on the kind of pastel, the brand. 
so that I'm not filling the tooth right away. So there is not a formula where you start with hard pastels and finish with softer pastels? I don't believe in formulas at all. I mean, every painting is, you know, I'm, I'm coming at it with, you know, yeah, there's definitely some experience, but not a formula. I wish I could say to you guys, yeah, do it this way, and then it'll work for you. I really wish I could, but I can't. It doesn't, you know, every every... Everything's different. Every situation is different. All lighting situations are different. Um, it'd be it'd be much easier, right, if it, if we could just find a formula. But I don't think it it's there. And if you get a specific set of pastels, say a nocturne or an animal set, like the kind that uh, Terry Ludwig uh, offers, yeah. would you just mix those into your regular palette, or would you oh, keep yeah. them separate? Yeah, I don't. You know the I, I you know I love those guys. Um, I mean, I love uh, the the. I don't believe I don't I don't I don't subscribe to sets. Because I don't think, because again, every situation is different. You could buy a portrait set, but depending on the skin tone of your model, depending on what they're wearing and the purve prevailing light is, what's, what chair they're sitting on is going to um, have to do with, um, uh, uh, going to change. So, yeah, you could buy a set. It might, it might give you a, a little, a little, um, jump on a couple of things, but it's not going to be the, the answer. <laughs> Again, because I just don't think there is a formula. So now, check this out, this sky right here. Look at, look at what colors these are. going to get a little bit more aggressive with some color or more definitive I should say oh it sounds like it's really raining out okay now I'm going to go ahead and get my my yellow in what did I say I wanted it right I want the sun right and I'm going to, you know, I'm really reserving the power of this for right here. And then there are these, these guys here. And then I'm going to knit stuff around that. And that's not it. Uh, uh, maybe this. And uh, just to clarify again, you have a Canon printer? It is a Canon printer. And it's not the end all. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just... I just went online and picked one, you know, it's not like, you know, it's, I didn't really do tons of, you know, in-depth research on it or anything like that. And um, it works. you use both glossy and matte paper, just whatever you have kind of thing? Um, I print the, these out on, it's premium glossy. Any reason why? It's or? photo, it's because it, it, they look better if you... Um, they do look better. Mm. 
I'm trying to get that that kind of glowy color there. Look at all that intensity. Woo. Just want to get it. I just want to get it right. Right in there. Oh, I think this is the right one. And then as it comes up, it gets it goes to this again. Ooh, that's such an interesting mix of um, that kind of green and then this. It's really hard. It's th this is this is hard to figure out. And then it gets orange again. It's kind of orange here. I'm not sure that's right, but I'm going to go with that for at least for, for right now I am. What time have I got? I'm just going to kind of marry this together. So I'm kind of layering some colors because I'm not feeling like it's exactly, it's so complicated. And I'm trying to save some of these really intense ones because I, I don't want to, I don't want to use it all, all that power up, but I'm going to see what happens with it. So Marla, um, are you thinking about cool and warm colors as you choose the colors? And can you talk about, you know, color choice and, cool, and picking cool or warm colors as it applies to pastel painting? <laughs> That's a really in-depth question that I can't answer right now. Do you want another in-depth question? Do you think people see color differently? <laughs> well, from a from a physiological standpoint, there's apparently not that much difference. I mean, we could really like talk. You could have a really in-depth conversation, a really um, cool conversation about that. But um, from a physiological standpoint, there really isn't that much difference. However, you know, given any any given situation, um, people would see it different. Ooh, it's getting there. I'm having to use more um, uh, a little bit brighter stuff than I thought, actually, to get it. Which is kind of fun. Whoo! It's getting there. And it's kind of interesting how, wow, all of a sudden it kind of starts to come together. You want to, you know, make these clouds, they're not these solid forms, they're, they're vaporous and airy and they have um, a certain feel to them. So now I feel like I'm pretty st steady on some of this, so now I can have a little bit more fun.
And would you say that this is the blocking in stage where you're working here? I would say so, yeah. I'm, I'm still not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still figuring stuff out a little bit. And as far as your reference photos go, um, do you like the, the ones that you can hold in your hand, the four by sixes? Or do you ever go, do you ever print larger? I don't photos? print them larger because I, for one thing, I'm not interested in a ton of detail. I'm really interested in the overall, interested in some of the idea about color, but I'm not, you know, if you start getting too, too big, then it's really easy to get kind of like, um, en enchanted by the detail, and I don't really want that. I, you know, I'm not. That's not my focus. So um, I'm gonna keep it on the small side. But honestly, that this holding of the the, the photo reference, it's really, um, it's really personal. I I don't know that you, you know, I would so recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Ooh, getting there. Wow. Ooh. I'm feeling like I'm having to exaggerate some of these colors to get it to just to the point where it really is. And I find that is the case a lot. Like I'm, you know, I, I think I'm I think I'm really pumping it up, really pushing it. And then then I realize, no, that's just that's just about how it is. And that happens to me a lot. So out here toward the horizon, the marks, I want to keep it a little smoother and the marks a little bit more quiet. And then as I get out here, uh, I can start getting a little bit more activity that kind of suggests that I can really see the individual waves. And a little bit more contrast in these marks. And then over here, some of this brown is going to work. Stuff like this. I can hear these waves here. It's really cool. What are they doing? They're peaking. What, what's happening with the, what's the form of the wave? And then it, Kevin, am I doing a good job of staying out of the way? Or Fantastic. What? Am I? Yep. <sighs> I mean, sometimes you have to, you know, block a little, but it's okay. So here's a statement here. Um, I've never seen a photo that is able to accurately capture the vibrancy that I actually see in the sky. So it makes sense to me to push a lot. I would say to this person, they've probably never seen a Roger Thompson photo. That's, That's probably right. I guess, yes. Well, here's a little secret. Roger Thompson photo. Roger Thompson photo. Yeah. Roger He's in the house. Roger is in the house, and Roger is very generous to contribute his amazing photography to our brand new workshop, which is going to be coming out soon. I'm not going to say any more because I'll get in trouble. By saying any more about it. And just another nuts and bolts question. Mm -hmm. um, Wallace paper is no longer available. As, well, I don't want to say that. But if, it, if um, you couldn't get it, what would you consider as a replacement? Well, um, I'm using as a replacement pastel matte. 
but it's not it's not it's not the same at all so I but I'm just preferring to use that paper um, mostly now um, uh, I don't know I mean there's you art there's um, Lux archival there's another one maybe somebody in the chat can say it's like Fletcher or I'm not even sure what it's called I haven't tried it yet but I know some of my students have tried. There's another one that people are really talking about and liking, and I've got to try it, um, but I haven't yet. Okay, so now I am um, um, uh, holding off on putting the white in there of the, of the sun because I know it's going to be neat and fun to do. So I'm waiting and giving myself that fun thing, which is something I do a lot. I gotta smooth out the sky. I gotta finish. I got. I got some work to do here, um, but that's okay. Roger, are you, you're not shooting video, huh? No, you're not. Okay. Here's, a, here's an interesting question mm -hmm. um, that I haven't heard yet. Okay. Um, when you create a watercolor underpinning on sanded paper, does it change the quality of the paper? You know, not very much because it's so thin. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't really do very. I would. I would say there's. It's marginally. It marginally changes. Of course, it's gonna it's gonna change it. There's some something that's happening there. So, but it's so marginal. It's not it's not gonna make any kind of problem for you to get uh, pastel on there. Which is one of the reasons people do it. One of the reasons. There's so many. There's a lot of really to me good reasons to, to do a, an, an underpainting. See, then as I get out there, it's so interesting, it's so pretty. Um, this, this purple kind of works for that silvery stuff. This and, and this. Maybe not that. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's so fun. This green, who would have thought, kind of works. And maybe And um, we have a comment here. It says, I try to interpret photos rather than just replicate them. And that's really your approach too, correct? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to do every mark. I'm trying to put, make a suggestion of what's here. Certainly not trying to, I'm trying to, you know, it's my impression. So it, it definitely, from the, that impressionist perspective, I would say that's pretty accurate. even when it's a really good photo. That's why sometimes it, it does feel like easier to paint some, a photo that's not as good because there's, it, it feels like there's sort of some aspect of it that there's room in there for you. Okay, that's kind of getting there.
what else do I want to do? I'm going to come in. Oh, I know what I want. I want. I want some stuff like this. So here's an interesting question, um, not directly related to this mm -hmm. demo, but mm -hmm. can you sign a pastel painting with a medium other than a pastel? Um, could one sign with a pencil or ink or keep the signature oh. date small and clear, that kind of thing? Oh yeah, sure. You could, you could sign with a, um, I, and I have, you know, you could sign with a pencil or, yeah, it'll stick on there. Definitely. I want to get this, this wave kind of crests. I'm not I'm futzing with that too much. I got to I've got other stuff to do, so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna get a little bit in the middle here, you guys. Got a lot of fun color in the ocean. It's nice. need to clean up that horizon and maybe soften some of this up a little adjust some of this value And um, Helen is impressed that you're not blending that much. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna blend a little bit more, but I, I, you know, I'm trying to rely on the mark making and the strokes more than anything else. Um, not um, even though because I, I don't think that the, the softness of the edges of the clouds will ha be very effective if I. If I'm blending everything all, all, all the time, then nothing really works as soft. So, you know, I always think about the relativity of everything. really want to catch that. Okay, so now now I'm going to work on the sky a little bit more. Oh, one thing I want to do. This is not reading exactly what I what I want it to do. I want this to be Here's another nice. question. Um, do you know of any other brands of pastels that are as dark as Terry Ludwig's darks? I no, I don't. Maybe there's someone else out there that could answer that. All right, now I'm going to try to get this corona, this. Okay, 
I'm supposed to take a break here. And I'm supposed to remind you guys to go to the Black Friday sale because it's only another week. And go, so go check, go to the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com and be sure to check out what's going on there. I don't want to really get that pressing pretty hard. Um, then I feel like the water needs that. Oh, it's not bad. So Marla, are you going to take a break break or just a... I'm going to take a break break in okay. a minute. Because I, yeah. But do you think you'll, you'll finish this piece today? Yeah. I will. I'm going to finish. But I, you know, I'm getting all like, oh, I got to pick on it. I gotta wipe. I got. Thing is, I gotta wipe my hands off right now so that I can. So I can finish. And I'm, but I'm getting really involved. That's not right. Oh, and there's one other. There's another color that I want to bring in that I'm kind of been waiting to do and that is some really really aqua I don't want to take a, I want to take a look at the painting right that that's not right I'm gonna fix that gotta fix that right at the horizon all right so you want to take that break and we'll just cut to the other camera for a little while um, yeah okay <laughs> Okay, so yes, so you guys, make sure you check out Color College. Um, the, it's been really fun to see everybody posting on the Color College Facebook group and see what everybody's doing. Uh, and as I said, I'm going to work on a pastel color wheel this weekend, and I'm hoping I'm going to post a little video on there for you guys. Um, but yeah, so I mean, just make sure that you know that the, um, the sale's just another week, and um, the, um, let's see, I want to talk about it. Yeah, so yeah, the, so we're giving that $23 coupon off on any order, and that's only good for one, um, one per customer. So make sure you fill up your, your, your shopping bag with all the workshops that you want. And that's the Black Friday that's sale, correct? That's the Black Friday sale, cool. yeah, cool. yeah. And Color College is already discounted, so it doesn't apply to that, but, um, yeah, it's a good addition. Color College is a good addition. So, um, and remember that the monthly is um, um, like a gym membership. That's so you you get access to everything for as long as you're a member. But once you're not a member anymore, that goes away. But the workshops are different. The workshops, once you buy them, you have access to them forever, or at least as forever as the, there's the internet, and we can keep keep them up there. Um, so they're um, different. But the workshops are kind of a deep dive into oh. um, what's going on. Let's take a look over there. Um, I think it looks like your battery's died. Oh, boy. Here you go. So you're going to take my mic. Emma, here you go. Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. OK. Oops, 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 oops. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> Boy, these things really eat the batteries. It's amazing. Yeah. I painted and I talked too long. That's the thing. If that's okay. Um, yeah. So, 
Yeah, so make sure you check out the, the um, website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and check out our sale because it really is the best sale. And I really have tried really hard to make the lessons as affordable as we possibly could and as good as we possibly could. And you can um, access the lessons 24-7 from any device. It's really a really good, pretty seamless experience. We have fantastic customer support and we really, really try hard, so check it out. Okay, should we, should we go back and get this, this puppy? There's a few things. So what I'm looking at that I wanna change. So right here, this cloud bank is where the, the sun is dipping down um, behind it. So there's this corona. Right now, it's, this isn't, it isn't reading like that. So I need to lighten the value of this, I think, and, and gradate it out a little bit more. I want this to be a little bit softer right here. I want the gradation in the sky to be a little bit more um, gradual and nuanced. So there's that. I'm going to play in here. I'm also going to add some aqua. I want to get this horizon nice and, I think, kind of crisp. Um, I think that that would look good in this situation. Maybe play with these guys, the waves a little bit, get it to really like the water's really falling over the edges of the wave. The, these kind of these things maybe don't need to be quite as pronounced. I think maybe clean that up a little bit. So that's the work to do. Um, maybe work on these shapes, get these shapes a little bit more. Um, designed I guess so here we go let's let's do those things starting with this because that's that's the thing that pops out to me like yeah that doesn't really work so I'll try to do it Yeah, see that? So now that it looks like the sun is dipping um, behind. A little, little softer. Get that horizon. A little crisper. I'll come. I'll swing back to that too. So really being able to sort of identify these things as you're painting, um, it's, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, that's that self-critique thing um, that I think, you know, as, as you get to be more experienced painter, it's easier to do, um, but, it, but it's not easy. So what's... On the whole, as I'm painting, what I'm really trying to do is build on what's working and minimize what's not working. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the thing. Good. I don't want to get, you know, too carried away. That doesn't need to be so.
So Marla, um, do you think there is a particular brand of pastels that, uh, that offers the most saturated chromatic colors? Um, no, I mean, no, I mean, I think not, not really, because I, 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 what I, what I think about that is I, I don't think that there is an answer to getting, the, 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 the thing I, I, I hear from students all the time is that, oh, if I only had this, you know, more pastels, or if I only had this, that that's going to solve my my problem, and I don't think it is. You know, you, you make the colors look saturated, not by the actual color being saturated, but by what next to it. Um, it's it's you're it's building those relationships. It's not really anything else. It's, it's not any more mysterious or harder than that. It's just that's that's what it is. Something is only bright next to something that's dull. Something's only dull next to something that's bright. Something's only tall next to something that's that's um, short. It's this the way it is. That's not. It, um, It's cool. Right. Now I'm just kind of marrying some of these colors together. And now I'm blending a little bit more. I want, I want, I want something else. To let you guys know if there if you have blurry video sometimes just check your settings and, and set it to HD uh, you know 1080p and it should it should clear up or refresh your page or something like that yeah because I don't think we're blurry today we're, we're making other technical diff, uh, technical problems and the goon squad is is uh, whispering behind the camera sorry oh. about that guys oh is that right yeah. yeah, we'll clean that up. What do we got? Oh, I'll talk to you guys about it. <laughs> no, um, sometimes we have a new we have a new person joining us today named Bryce, helping with the with the uh, live stream, and every once in a while we'll just whisper to each other, and I forget to turn my mic off. Oh, so oh, oh! You guys are getting a real behind the scenes look, we're or be behind the scenes listen, I should say. Yeah, we're we're working really hard to bring you guys the best kind of experiences we possibly can just and you guys are great at kind of bearing with us so we really really appreciate it as we as we tackle these technical hurdles that we and the thing that's kind of crazy it's, uh, you know the 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 landscape of of YouTube is always changing so as soon as we get something figured out something something will change and so it's always a it's always a, um, a, a fun mystery. <laughs> Work in progress. Yeah. Did Roger leave? Roger left, yes. Oh. I didn't get to say goodbye. Okay. I hope he didn't leave, leave. Listen. All right, so I think that that's getting there. Okay, now I want to And 
I want to clean up my horizon and then I'm going to work just a little bit on the sun and the sky. So I'm going to come in back up with my my straight edge here. And this is something I don't do that often, but in this case I, I just kind of want that edge to be um, crisp because I think it works in this case. Oh, and look what happened there. I lost my little edge here. Well, that's interesting. I have to come back to that. Now, this needs a little um, this needs a little edge. Not sure that works, but we'll see. And so now I'm just going to kind of marry some of this. Time is it? Oh, I'm doing that. Not that bad. Okay. Oh, I thought I was running way, 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 way late, but not too bad. So, yeah, I like this color. It kind of works. I'd like to get those waves a little bit. It'd just be kind of fun. Just to get a few marks in here for those. And I, I want to flatten this out a little bit. Now I'm just trying to get some idea, some marks that kind of suggest that water the way I want it. I think that's pretty fun. Now I'm just going to marry some of this stuff in here. My sky soften some of these edges, some vertical mar strokes here. And I have in mind to, to bring in some aqua that's a little darker up in here. So I get a little more gradation in the sky, something like that, and then bring in this down in here. Just a tiny bit. Kind of 
because I like it. And just a little bit of darker underneath of these clouds. And get this to come out so it's full frame. Here's a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, will this piece be available for sale on Daily Paintworks? <laughs> yes, this piece will be available for sale. And I'm not going to go for a walk today because it's yucky out. <laughs> so I'll do it pretty soon. I'll do it quickly. It's a pretty icky day here. It's cold and it's rainy. And it's not fun. Not a fun weather day here. But can't win them all. We've had a pretty nice winter overall. So. And most of the time you do put your paintings on Daily Paintworks? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Sometimes not? Yeah. There's a couple times not. I, you know, a couple, few weeks ago I did the little, those little studies. Some of you guys um, painted along and I saw, the, uh, I saw a bunch of them. It was so great to see. Um, but I, I, I like them and I wanted to hold on to them for a little while. Eventually I might sell them, but I... You know, sometimes I just need to hold on to something, I, something I want to refer to for a little bit. Um, I don't know what else I want to do. Um, let me get this a little bit. I've got a lot of product on this one. It's okay though. It kind of works. And I'm going to just get in here. One last time. Get the, I'm just kind of cleaning up this yellow because I've got it. I've got some other um, pastel in there that's kind of making it a little dirty. So I'm just cleaning it up. And there's some idea that there's some light edges to this. So I want to wipe my hands off before I go in and touch it again. Now I haven't used white, white. That pastel that you just saw there, it, it's not white, white. It's a really pale yellow. Oh, that's kind of fun. I think, I think that's kind of it. Maybe, maybe a couple little of these kind of guys that are flying around would be fun because they, they give a little bit of a gesture. Just playing with these shapes a little bit. Just making these a little more airy. I'm 
You know what, Kevin? I don't have the. Yeah, thank you. You're good egg. Thank you. No. I think this one is a nice one to have a look at it with the with those on there because it's. I think it's going to kind of pull it together. can't find the cleaner mats, but we'll just okay. use these for today. And we'll take a look at the sticks that you used as well. I'll okay. zoom in on them. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's fun. It's definitely, you know, outside the box a little bit for me, this, this kind of thing. But it, I really, really enjoy doing it because I, I feel like, you know, figuring out these colors, they're so tricky. They're, it's so, um, uh, it, what is, seems like it's just so, um, like, crazy bright and bold really depends on quite a bit of nuance in, in here, in the color choices, which is kind of really, really interesting. So it's really interesting and fun to paint. Challenging, but, you know, being up for a challenge is a good thing. I think that um, if it isn't a little hard, then, then you know, then you're not growing. Um, cool. Do you want to so, um, do you want to mat that, and we'll just do a little zoom in on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, cool. Let's do it. So we'll get rid of that picture in picture, and we'll just zoom in here. We'll look okay. at your sticks in just a second. Okay. Ugh, it's kind of a mess here. I want to move the mess out of the way so it doesn't look bad. Okay. Okay. Let me just jump let's over see. here. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, I really got to. Uh, problem is, I don't go to the art supply store very much anymore. And getting mat board is not that. And let me just easy. zoom in on this guy. Let's get a good look. Yeah, okay. that cleans it up. Yeah, what do y'all think of that? It's not it's, bad. It's not bad at all. I think that that works out. It's pretty cool. It's really neat. Cool. I like this. Uh, you know, this one little element of the wave here. Really, in its it's kind of directional to the focal point here really adds a lot to the whole thing which is kind of interesting as well so okay all right guys and let's well let's take a look at those sticks sticks just so we there's there it's just a jumble it's just a big old mess of all kinds of um hues and a wide variety of hues a wide variety of of um, values and intensities. So we've got some neutrals. We've got these really highly saturated ones. So it's not surprising that that's the case. Maybe a little more surprising how many neutrals there are or muted colors by comparison. And look at the brown. That's pretty, I think that that's really kind of interesting. aqua so yeah very fun cool so how about we head over to camera two and we'll just do a little okay. send up maybe you can answer okay. a couple more uh, yeah I'd be happy questions. to answer some questions and remind you guys to go to the website paintinglessonswithmarla.com I know people different people come into the stream at different times so I just want to make sure you know that there's a sale going on black friday sale only a week left so be sure to head over to the website and check it out we have lessons in watercolor in oil in pastel and acrylic so check it out all right cool anything else marla questions? i mean um let's see if you have any questions? questions just um well, everyone's just so, they're so thankful. Oh, and, um, oh, I'm so thankful to you guys. I really so appreciate you guys watching. And be sure to watch for our um, 
holiday stuff because we're going to be doing some gift giving, which I'm really excited about. And it's going to be really fun. And but we're not doing it until the till um, right before Christmas and that that week in between. That's that's our plan, and we're we're planning on doubling up on doing the live stream, so um, you'll have plenty of opportunity. Maybe it'll be cold and you'll be cooped up where you are, so um, there'll be plenty of live streaming going on over here, so you can tune in and watch. So Cool. So, yeah, let's call it a day. Okay, let's call it a day. All right, you guys, thanks again for tuning in. Um, have a great weekend. Love you so much, and see you soon. Okay, bye.